What's up, Online Empire Academy? I am Joshua Woodward, and I am here with Jeff Bear. He's a wholesaler from BobbleFactory.com. How you doing, man? I'm great, Joshua. Thanks for having me here today. Absolutely. So I wanted to bring Jeff on because he is a wholesaler, and I don't know if any of you guys have ever worked with wholesalers. It can get confusing. And one of my biggest frustration is I don't know the language on how to communicate with a wholesaler. I don't know... I don't know what you know what to look out for, what to avoid, and and so I wanted to bring Jeff on to just kind of share first off his story, but then kind of teach us how to walk through all this stuff. So Jeff, tell us your story, man. All right. Well, my story, um, my, my my wholesale story is based on uh, the promotional products industry. Back in two thousand two, a friend of mine uh, came to me and said, Jeff. You know, I, I used to supply him pens, keychains, and all that uh, tchotchke stuff. And he said, I want to give away a bobblehead to all the insurance agents that send me business. He was in the flood restoration business. So he, he thought that if he could create a bobblehead that was of him, because he only had a little <laughs> ego, um, <laughs> that, that, that it would sit there and, and he would be one of the first responders would get the call when there was a flood or a fire. So, you know, I was tasked with, you know, navigating the waters and finding, um, you know, a source for bobbleheads. In case your, your, your audience doesn't know, uh, I am unaware of any mass producing bobblehead manufacturer in the good old US of A. It <laughs> is a product that comes from China. So, uh, you know, back in 2002, when Alibaba was a sliver uh, uh, of what they were, uh, you know, I had to, to use old school methods and I had to reach out to my contacts and I was put in touch with somebody who, lo and behold, um, said, yes, they can help me source this product. And I'm going to tell you that the first time in that first bottle project, it took at least six times to get the sample right. The coloring was wrong, and it was, you know, the packaging was wrong. And, you know, I really learned a lot about the process and getting things done the right way. Um, you know, from the trying to come up with art to make the bobblehead from, uh, to, to getting a, a finished product that I had to, you know, bring literally over on the slow boat from China into the USA. You know, back then we brought our merchandise in through Port of Long Beach. Then it had to come on a rail to Chicago. Then it had to go on a, into a bonded warehouse. Then I had to send my trucker in to get it. And then I finally delivered it to uh, to my friend, where then he went and, and gave it to uh, people. You know, like I said, it was a promotional item. So uh, you know, I've learned a lot along the way. I've changed uh, suppliers more than once, and right now, you know, I've got a a very strong relationship, and and I work with. Um, what some people call as, a, as an agent. So he doesn't work for me exclusively, but um, you know, we, 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 we supply him a substantial amount of bobble business. And you know, 10 years later, we've developed um, really a, a trust that you just can't, you know, it, it can't be replaced, you know. Um, he knows he's getting paid. I know I'm getting my merchandise. Um, if there's something where there's a problem, I know I've got, a, you know, somebody who's going to help me solve the problem. And, you know, let me clue your listeners in on something because it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. There will always be problems. So, uh, you know, I think the thing, you know, you can do everything right and something can go wrong. OK, that's good. Um, you know, a lot of times I'm doing stuff that's extraordinarily time sensitive and, you know, it can hit the fan and things can happen. And, you know, I can tell you the story about 
how we delivered 60,000 bobbles to Raymond James Stadium in Tampa Bay for a Mike Allstott bobblehead giveaway, and we made kickoff by about 24 hours. So, oh my gosh. yeah, it was, uh, you know, a couple of uneasy moments. And, you know, there's uh, a lot of people who ordered merchandise last year at this time where they were hopeful and they thought it would be a no-brainer to get it to where it needed to go in time for the Christmas holiday season. And there was such slowdowns in the ports that, um, you know, merchandise is, uh, you know, never made it where it needed to go. So, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I would tell people who, um, who are interested in direct importing is don't underestimate the time. You know, really make sure that you inspect anything and everything a second time before it leaves. Always, you know, hang on to a physical sample so you have something to, to match it up. And, you know, I know your audience is selling through a lot of marketplaces that I'm only scratching the surface on. But with the proper kind of planning, um, you know, I think that there's, you know, a, a smart, person can really kind of set it up to where they can sell on Amazon or sell on eBay and, and take some steps early on that will help them in the fulfillment of their orders once the merchandise gets here. So yeah. uh, that's it. What else can I tell you? <laughs> well, I, I'd love to know for, for me personally, if I'm going to work with Alibaba or, or any, any of those agencies, what do I need to know before we even start with that? What, what you need to know for starters is just because you see a picture and you reach a contact with somebody on Alibaba, that there's a, a, a high probability that, um, that the person who's showing that picture never made that item. Huh. You know, and, and, and this is, I don't want to slam Alibaba, but this is true of a lot of products that I've sourced globally is that just because they show you a picture doesn't mean that they're the true supplier of it. And, you know, I've seen my products pictured on Alibaba, okay? Really? And, and without any of my consent or permission. So you really just got to, you know, I would tell you that if you're going to be in the importing business, you really got to forge a relationship with somebody who, who, who really is somebody that you can trust with your business over there and represent your interest, but they're also going to represent the interests of the factory. So, totally. uh, or, you know, what I would advise people who are getting started, you know, is, is to find somebody like me in the USA who will just take care of all that on their behalf and deliver you a, a, a furnished product. You know, there's, um, when I buy something, I'm buying an FOB Orient, okay? So most of my stuff ships out of Shanghai right now. But, um, you know, so I'm responsible for everything from Shanghai to when, you know, it hits our, our distribution facility in the Chicago area. When you buy something from Asia, that's on you, okay? You, you're the one, you know, you're going to need a customs bond. You're going to need a relationship with a freight forwarder. And, you know, uh, depending on how much you're importing and what you're bringing in, you know, are you bringing in your own container of merchandise or are you sharing space on a container with somebody else? You know, all you need is one other person's documentation in a shared container to be not up to snuff, and your stuff is in, in, in customs vault. So it, it, it's all happened, and, uh, you know, you, that's why I advise people to leave extra time, budget a little bit extra to, to make sure you can cover the mistakes. Um, you know, and, and to really, um, you know, what, what you want to make, you will get 
much better results if you take extra steps up front to to give them the information that you need. So if I was going to make a Joshua Bible, okay, uh, you know, I, I would first say to you, okay, do you want a cartoon Bible or a more realistic Bible? Okay, so you, you strike me as a realistic guy. <laughs> so what I would tell you is, you know, hey, let's let's start with really good pictures. Okay, so if you're wearing that flannel shirt or you want, you know, it's a podcasting uh, bobble, you know, I want you with those headphones on, and I'm gonna take, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not physically gonna take them. I'm gonna have somebody, you know, take them of you, uh, you know, somebody that you're close to. And I'm going to say, hey, man, you know, let's, I want that smile in the Bible. So, you know, don't be Mr. Droopy and, you know, <laughs> pose as you want. It. You want your arms crossed and, 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 you know, so I'll take the pictures and I'll have you, you know, in the exact pose. And then I'll make suggestions and recommendations about things we can do to the base or, you know, maybe there's a, you know, a lot of the stuff I do is sponsor driven. So we'll add a corporate logo or something like that to the base. Um, but what I like to do is I like to take it a step further. And I like to say, okay, this brown is, and I give them a Pantone number. Because that, you got to understand, English is maybe their second language, probably their third or fourth language. So as much guesswork as you can take out of the equation, you know, the better results that you will have. That's so good. I think that's that's one of the big points that I've been afraid of is is getting a rep in in China. Luckily, my best friend lives in China, so so he he just moved over there and he's he's created some contacts, which has been great. Um, but you know, the other fear for me has been the like going in and out of ports because exactly what you said, I'm not going to buy enough to fill a container. Like not, not as, as a seller, like, like not at the level I'm at, I'm never going to fill a, a full container. So, you know, I think it's good to know, like, Hey, have your paperwork in order. That way it goes quicker. Um, what well, are some of the, the in, in talking to a wholesaler? So if, if I, if I, as the buyer didn't want to have to deal with any of that, I just wanted to deal directly with the wholesaler. What is some of the terminology or language that I need to know? Well, the, the truth is when you deal with a wholesaler like me, you, you go from needing to know this to needing to know this, okay? But the, 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 key, the key things are, are terms, okay? I mean, you know, you want to know, well, all right, what, what is it that I'm agreeing to buy, Okay. You know, what is the delivery time frame, you know, from prototype to estimated ship date, how many days on the water, you know, where where's that merchandise clearing, you know, what port is it coming through? So, uh, you know, if you're in, you know, if I'm shipping, I'm located in the Midwest, I'm smack dab in the country. If I could start all over again, I'd meet my family and I, we'd probably live in the state of Washington, okay? Because there is a huge advantage to being on the West Coast, okay? So, you know, I, you know from Shanghai to the West Coast is, you know, approximately 15 days, okay? So, you, you know, there's, you know, everybody wants it tomorrow, you know, or yesterday. So you got to know what your transit time is. You got to know when you're paying for the merchandise. You know, with my customers, it's usually a three-step process at the wholesale level. And that's, uh, you, know, the, you know, I take a deposit when we make the prototype, okay? And that's kind of a, a you know, it's just to prevent people from running away from me, which it happens, okay? But at least I'm not going to, you know, the truth is, is from my perspective, the hardest amount of work we do is making that first piece, okay? Making that sample, um, you know, especially when we're doing a bobble of a human because it's got to look like you. If it doesn't, at the end of the day, if it doesn't look like you, you know, you know, <laughs> you don't want them. So, um, you know, you know, you got to know, uh, you know, all right. So, 
I'm paying you a deposit. So in my case, you know, we charge, depending on the complexity of the of that, we'll charge five hundred to a thousand dollars to develop the prototype. And trust me, it, it is not a profit center for me in any way, shape, or form. It's just you know part of the process. So then you get your sample, and I'll say, okay, you know, and and you usually what we do before we air freight in because what we'll do is we'll air freight it in is we'll show you pictures of it via the internet you know via email so ah you know hey jeff you know i got a little less facial hair than that or something like that so you know we work on that or you know you'd make an excellent bobble but i get some guys <laughs> appreciate who, it <laughs> I, I, I get some guys you know where they have you know like that comb over here, you know, it's, 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 it's difficult to get it right. But, you know, listen, you know, I, I got the same. If you can pay, you can bobble. So I like it. So we have, um, get, you know, we show the pictures. Oh, well, that, my color doesn't look right. And that's another thing to be really, really careful. Um, you know, I, I list just with you. We listen to Jason T. Smith talk about photography, right? Well, okay, you take a picture, and if the lighting or if the camera is bad, you know, it can make something look greener than it really is, okay? So, you know, so we have that back and forth process, and then when everybody says, yeah, it looks good, then we still bring in a piece physically. It might take us a little bit longer in the whole process, but that's, uh, the mis those are the mistakes that you don't want to make, is just trusting that the other guys got it right. Okay? There's, you know, there's no substitute for inspecting the stuff yourself. You know, I, um, I, I remember I, I did a, a prototype once for Jeff Probst from for, for the Survivor Show, and so I brought it in, and you know, he was kind of a little difficult to get his face just right, and we brought it in. And then the sample sat on my desk, and it sat there, and it sat there, and uh, and I, I made two of them, one for a, 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 fr a good friend of mine who was, a, she's a big fan of the show, right? And it's sitting there, and she's like, Jeef. And I'm like, Jeef? She goes, yeah, Jeef. And I looked on the base, and it was J-E-E-F. Oh my god! Misspelled. Now we had nothing was in production, okay, but that was just a nightmare waiting. You know that those are the kind of things that can happen. You know when they're painting letters, when the factory workers who don't know any English, okay, and they're they're literally hand painting letters. They don't know an E from an F, okay. So you know there there there's things you can do to mitigate that and design, especially if we do things with like logos on chests and stuff like that, where a lot of times um, most of the bobbles hand painted, but the super detailed stuff might be a water soluble decal. So that we accurately, um, you know, display it. Um, I would tell people, you know, okay, so we've talked all this time about, you know, about, the bobble, right? Here's here's a project we did for Dilbert, um, but I would also tell you that packaging is, is equally as important. Okay, um, you know our first supplier over 12 years ago, it was a plain white box, which I was fine with, but it didn't have the window. Okay, so you know the, the thing that would happen is, and it was a block of styrofoam in on the inside. So you, it just was not as attractive. You know, the, the great thing about this is you could distribute this and right away people would know, oh, yeah, okay, I got the right product, okay? I would take this a step further because I'm exploring with, you know, on behalf of some of my clients, some platforms, some different platforms that will be new for us where it might go into, you know, FBA, or, or it's product, it's really, nobody would wholesale product to then just sell it on, on, on eBay, okay, because the minimums are probably a little prohibitive. Um, but, you know, I, I'm working on a project for somebody on Kickstarter right now. So, 
not all, you know, so a package like this will come into a master carton, and depending on the final shape and size, it might be 12 pieces or 24 pieces. So that's absolutely something that your listeners need to know is what what is, you know, what is not just the product, but the packaging, but then what's the master carton, okay? And then I would say, well, gee, are you going to maybe – Maybe you're running a Kickstarter on a bobblehead, okay, and you're not going to handle the fulfillment. Maybe you're going to reach out to a company like ShipBob or somebody like that to handle the fulfillment for you. So, you, you know, you might want to say, boy, if I could have it put into a reshipper in the Orient, I could save myself, you know, the process of taking 1,000 or 2,000 bobbles and putting them into a reshipper cart. Where, you know, the time to maybe make those considerations, you know, is when you're developing the product. So, you know, if it's going into retail, you know, you probably want, um, you know, something completely different like a, a, a retail box. So, you know, this was something that, you know, we did uh, the original Anchorman movie uh, back in 2004. And so this is a four-color gift box. So... Is that necessary for FBA? No, but if you're developing and you're, you're going to have multiple avenues of distribution, we all know uh, from watching those cable shows that if you have a good item in the original retail packaging, it's always worth a lot more much later on. So, um, you know, th those are, you know, things that you really need to think way uh, you know, way, way, way in, ad in, in advance, you know, is where is it going? And is it going to multiple places? So, I, you know, I would, you know, give strong consideration to that. Part of it, the questions you ask is, okay, what are the payment terms? Well, of course, with everything with that is, what is the minimum order quantity, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and prices will definitely vary. Based upon what your MO, you know, the lingo is MOQ, and uh, you know, for us, our minimum order quantity is uh, 252 pieces. You know, the reason it's not 250 is because 252 is divisible by 12. So you know, we we like to work in dozens, and, and um, you know, but the price that I would sell somebody 252 pieces is you know definitely different than somebody who's you know giving ten thousand away at a stadium yeah. so you know that's the trick is to um you know if you're going to try if you're going to retail these okay and you're going to put them in amazon and you're going to do fda uh, you gotta almost say okay you kind of got to do you know a little recon and sit and say hey this is what you know i see bobbles going for Okay, and and I you know I want to be here, and I know that Jeff's gonna sell them to me here, but I know Amazon's gonna take their cut. So you know, is this is this a worthwhile venture? You know, yeah. and, and that's it. Um, also, you know, I would tell you about bobbles, uh, specifically about bobbles, is there's different levels of material involved. Okay, you know, I've seen bobbleheads that are made of plastic, and our products are actually made of poly resin. But there's, you know, there's different weight of poly resin. You know, I've, I get some bobbles, and they just feel cheap in the hand. So, you know, when we're selling to our client base, you know, uh, a phrase that we like to use is ours are collector quality. <laughs> so, huh. you know, but you know, these are things that if you're going to then go to to retail packaging, you kind of want to work these elements into it. So, you know, for the person just starting up, that's where I would say, hey, guys, you know, maybe before you, 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 you hop on a plane and go to the Canton Fair and try and meet with the factory, you know, you can, you can with somebody like myself, you can, you know, dip your toe in the water and, 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 and really determine if there's a, a market for you before you, you just go gung-ho. I think with anything you want, you know, proof of, of concept. So 
That's very good. I love it. I think that the the tools. I mean, I, I've taken notes, and you guys, I'll I'll post my notes in the um in the the comments section. But I, I love what you were saying just about like make sure you're covering your bases. Like if if you're not checking on on what you're you're going to be able to sell on Amazon and and you know all your costs and everything that goes along with that. Like make sure you you do that, or you're you're really going to end up in the hole and um. I think that I think that's awesome. I, I so appreciate your knowledge and and what you've brought to the table. Um, where can people find out more if they want to go create their own bobblehead? Where can they find if they, you? If they they want to certainly they can find us on the on the web at bobblefactory.com. That's b o b b l e f a c t o r y dot com. Uh, and we, we you know they should go. We have a, a pretty sizable gallery. Uh, of projects that we done that we have done um, our minimum order is 252 pieces we do not do individual bottles that's a completely different business uh, so you know we, we we welcome the opportunity to find out about your project and, and certainly draw on our expertise you know that was a whole other thing I get people who oh, I want a sword like this or a baseball bat like that and you know we really know where the pitfalls are of what can break off in the pro. In, you know, you know, think about it. You got this little statue that's got to make it all the way from China through the boat on a container off a rail in the Chicago. Maybe I'm shipping them to your UPS. Maybe I'm shipping them on a truck or pallet. It gets handled. So you really want to make sure. That that you that it gets to your destination safe. Totally, I love that. I love that. I love the communication. That's so important. Be able to communicate with your your wholesalers. So, for those of you wanting to get in the wholesale business, these are the things you need to look out for. Again, they'll be in the comment section. We'll make sure to, to I'll I'll take my notes and, and transcribe them into there. And uh, Jeff, thank you so much for being on. Thank you for Gosh, sharing. Well, your thanks for inviting me. I really I I, I enjoyed it and. and you know, we hopefully we could do it again soon. Absolutely. Yeah. So again, if you guys want to check them out, bobblefactory.com. If you like this or anything else you're seeing on our site, um, you can join us on Facebook. You can join us on Stitcher Radio, iTunes, YouTube. We're everywhere. Also on www.theonlineempireacademy.com. Thank you so much for coming. Until next time, Empire, have a great day.